and I'll finish up my slides next time. So I'll just introduce Dr. Miguel Nunish. He is the Deputy Director of the Hawaii Space Flight Lab and the Lead Systems Engineer for the Tai Tai mission. Um, he's gonna be showing you how to use the free version of STK, um, specifically how to plot an orbit and also how to plot the ground track, which is important for ground station tracking and also earth observing. So you are free to share your screen now. Um, and class, feel free to ask questions by unmuting or in the chat. Um, I want this to be more of a casual conversation. So yeah, mm -hmm. we'll take Definitely. it over. So hi guys, um, I guess I know some of you here, so that's good. Uh, I know Adam, I think has already been exposed to SDK and a couple of you, but uh, we'll go from the very basics and uh, 30 minutes will give you an intro on what SDK can do, but certainly it's not exhaustive. So I typically encourage students to go and uh, do the certification for SDK. So they have the tutorials online and then you can go step by step and be certified. Uh, so that's, that's a pretty cool thing to put on your resume. And uh, you can do, SDK used to be uh, called the satellite toolkit. Uh, but then they started adding uh, aircraft and boats and um, all kinds of other assets, ground stations, sensors. So they, they eventually renamed it as System Toolkit or Systems Toolkit. Uh, so it, it's a very powerful simulation tool. Uh, you can create uh, enclosed uh, simulations or you can connect to other tools like MATLAB, Python, um, etc., even like C programs. So you can uh, augment your simulation capabilities and uh, do more realistic simulations as well. So today we'll just get started on how to create a scenario. Hopefully you guys uh, did the training or the quick tutorial that I, I, I don't know if um, Frankie, they got to-, to They had do done that. the installation. Okay, so at least everybody has it installed. So hopefully you can follow the same steps that I have. I removed my professional license for SDK and installed a, a, a free one. So hopefully we're on the same page here. And yeah, let's go with that. So the first thing is you create a scenario, like you probably have done that before. So we'll do EPET tutorial. Let's see, I don't know if this will, I might have to share again. Let me know if it shows up again. You're good. Okay. Sometimes it takes a while just to load the scenario. All right. So now, let me actually share my whole screen because there's dialog windows here that sometimes pop up. Okay, so you can see these SDK objects window, right? Mm -hmm. Good. So the first thing we're gonna do, um, well, it's worth mentioning all these different objects. So you have an aircraft here on the free version, you don't have some of these, so you don't have a constellation chain, etc. cetera, um, but you have a ground vehicle, a place which could be a ground station uh, or just a target on the ground, a, sh a ship, uh, an area target. So this could be like a country or some general um, geometry that you want to define. A uh, facility, which is also sometimes used as a ground station, in fact, typically as a ground station, a missile, a, tar a satellite, and a target. So sometimes it's a bit confusing. Some of these seem to be the same, but uh, we'll get to that if we have the time. So we're gonna set, select satellites and then, uh, oh, and sorry, before that, you can attach objects. So in the satellite, you can attach a sensor, radar, antenna, et cetera. And to pretty much any of these uh, objects, you can attach stuff. So that augments your simulation capabilities. Um, 
So now we're going to select the methods to insert a satellite. And this is from various methods. So typically for today, I'm just going to do the orbit wizard. But uh, typical satellite orbits uh, use TLEs, uh, two line elements. This can be downloaded online. So you could select that. Or you can even select from a standard object database. So um, AGI, who is the mother company of SDK, they keep their own records of all the satellites and objects in space. So you can do, this is almost like an online search. You can just type International Space Station and it will pop up that. All right, so we'll do the orbit wizard. And then let's call this Razor satellite. And then uh, here's the different orbits that you can use. Uh, many of the orbits for CubeSats are circular or close to circular. Um, so we're going to use that today. But there's some interesting ones here. So Ammonia uh, orbit, it's very useful for uh, satellites that they will do a very elliptical orbit. And uh, when you're out, uh, the outer side of the orbit, um, the apogee, you're going to be looking at the Earth for an extended period of time. And then you come back and you roll around. So those are good for communication satellites or imaging satellites. Um, you have sun synchronous orbits, which are also very useful. Uh, those will basically always see the Earth. Like if you have a satellite with a the imager, it will always see the Earth in the same um, lighting conditions. So it will be always 10 a.m. when it passes over that particular point or something like that. So anyway, just to let you guys know, there's diff different uh, types of orbits. And you can generate your own type of orbit. So you can put your own coplarian elements, uh, etc., or state factor. Um, so here's the inclination. We're going to use the International Space Station uh, as an example. Or we're going to deploy uh, the Artemis CubeSat from the ISS. And then uh, it's going to be at 400 kilometers. And the right ascension of the ascending node, we're not going to worry too much about that for now. Um, but what that does is basically changes the placement of the orbits when you start. You can see that by doing this. So th this gives you a preview, but this parameter uh, doesn't matter too much for today. Uh, you're going to use the analysis interval for the scenario. So you could change this. You could start, you know, three hours after the scenario simulation start, but typically we don't do that. We typically use the same. Um, the, the reason why this could be useful is, for instance, if you want to simulate two different satellites and the first hour you want to do this satellite and the second hour you want to do another satellite. Uh, it depends on the cases. And then you can change the color. Uh, a yellow color is usually easier to see in this dark background, so I like to use yellow. And then the 3D model, which is pretty cool, uh, we're going to select uh, CubeSat. So, um, SDK gives you already pretty fine models, and these are um, physical models. So we're going to select the CubeSat 1U, DAE. This is a Colada file. So these files can actually get generated from SDK and from Blender. So eventually, if you guys get deeper into these, you're going to have to edit these files. But all right, so we'll select that, apply. Great. So now we have a Mercator uh, projection here. So you can see Razor is going to be, I should call this Artemis. Let's do that. So if you want to rename, you just click on the left side object list here. And we'll call that Artemis. So you're going to see the orbit right here. Uh, for one orbit, you can change this. You can see for more orbits by going to properties and changing the some of the primers here. I'm not going to do that. Just giving you an example. 
And here's the, the cool part. You can start to simulate. So we're going to play this and see, oh, OK, satellite is going that way. And it's going to pass to the other side of the planet. OK. You can also see uh, a light shade here. And that represents the daylight and then the darkness. So you see that all over this place. So right here, the satellite has entered the eclipse. Uh, period and it typically takes about 30 minutes for such an orbit and then off it goes to the sun. Let's visualize this on a 3D window. So there you go. So you can see Artemis going on over the South Pacific, eclipse time again and coming out of eclipse. So this is cool. You, you have many ways to visualize uh, the satellite. So one thing that I like to do is I go to a new 3D window. And it, now I have two, two views of the same satellite. And I can click here on this. If I'm going too fast, let me know. But uh, there's this button here that says View from 2. And I'm going to select that. So I'm going to select from the satellite to the satellite. That way, I can always track the satellite. Uh, and if I simulate again, I can see the satellite perspective directly. OK, any quick questions so far? Miguel, this is being recorded, so students can refer to it online as well. Adam, do you have a question? Yeah, which button was it to change to the satellite view? This one here. OK, thank you. OK, nice. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, are there ways to make the boundary of daylight and nighttime more visible on the map? I believe so. Let's see. Usually, so here's how you, SDK is a complex tool. Uh, and anything that you can imagine that it might be possible to do, it can do it, but sometimes it takes a while to find it. Uh, typically, you would want to go directly to the window properties. So there's always a, a properties icon attached to each of the windows here that you select. And it's specific to this uh, window. And I'm going to minimize that so you can see in real time what happens there. Um, And I have to look for it. Maybe it's here. Yes. Lightning. Lightning. And there you go. Yeah, nice. So I'm going to change the color so you can see that there's a difference. So uh, great question. All these things that you think it should be possible to do, I'm pretty sure SDK will do it. And also, since we're talking about this, this is really a brief, brief intro, but you should definitely go into SDK help here and training and tutorials. That's how you're going to learn a lot. Um, because otherwise, if you just try to do it by yourself, you're going to learn a lot too. But it's it, it you get you have, there's a mindset to this tool that you have to get into. And they, with the tutorials and the help, uh, it's easier to get there. All right, so, so I don't get distracted. Uh, there's should we do the, the ground track first? So we're going to try to add a ground station yeah. and then see uh, what the contact times are for that ground station. That's, That's great. Good. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to we'll do going to do this facility. Um, just going to insert a default facility here. I don't really care what this is going to be. Okay, I added here to the East Coast. And uh, we're going to do, so the SDK has many ways to calculate all kinds of parameters. I'm going to try to calculate uh, a, an axis uh, from the facility to the satellite, but you could also access from the satellite to the facility. So we're going to click on that. Oh, so what I did is I right click on the facility and then click access. All right, so 
Now I'm going to select access from to the, the Artemis satellite, and I'm going to compute. All right, great. And you can see on the TubeD map, it automatically projected the ground tracks for those accesses. Um, so I'm going to just do a quick run here. See, that was warned. Let's let's go back. So I can go in reverse, pause, and start again. Boom. So that's that section. Uh, the other ones are just orbits in the future that will access the facility. And this is where the time for the scenario becomes important because the more time you have to find here, this is just for one day. Uh, from 26 January to 27. So these are all the contexts for that one day. You could change these to two days, one month, one year, uh, depending on your uh, situation. And you can also see on the 3D window, these contacts. So I'm gonna see that. It gives you the range, which is the distance between the, the facility and the satellite. So you can see that the satellite will be looking, you know, uh, to its left side down. Uh, so if you had an antenna on the satellite, you would want to point the antenna towards that facility. Um, so let's go back to this axis window. And we want to now get a report. We want to see how many times we got the axis between this one day and uh, can we get more statistics out of it so SDK uses a lot of these types of reports so here's the first axis uh, it starts at this time in UTC universal time coordinate um, G I think it's global not, not too sure and stop time so and the duration for these pass was 520 seconds Great, so we have seven passes over one day, and the minimum duration of these passes is 40, 423 seconds, maximum duration is uh, 642, and average or mean is 562. So that gives you a sense of, okay, per pass, I typically have almost six minutes average of contact time with my satellite. Um, which is very typical for, for such a an orbit. Okay, uh, the other thing we can do here is to plot. So we can see uh, on a time basis, the different access times. And you see they're quite well uh, uh, even, because what happens is you have an orbit that is about 90 minutes uh, so every every 90 minutes you will expect to see another contact here um let's see what else can we get out of this can we change the position of the ground station to quiet sure. yes so who can get me uh the coordinates for quiet i'm going to try to do it by heart um, let's see if I got that right. But this is course, right? So yeah. You guys can get. Close. It was 22 and negative 159. Let's change that. So 22, uh -huh. 159. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can see the facility now move to that. Let's see if we got it right here. Yeah, close, close. A little bit more to the left, but it's fine for this example. Um, so great, what you need to do now is to clear the previous computations. So remove all accesses and recompute because you've changed. Uh, and now you can get, again, new reports. So you see the average here is a little bit less because you're closer to the equator. 
So the closer to the equator, the less contact times, the higher, um, the more contact times. Um, yeah, any other questions about this? So I think this is a great demo. Thank you, Dr. Nunesh. Um, let's open up for Q&A. Mm -hmm. You can ask questions that are specific to your mission. Like I know that we're gonna be visiting the Amazon for the Gaia mission, is that true? Uh, you're asking me? No, I'm uh, sorry, the student oh, teams. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we switched our mission to Alaska. Oh, gotcha. Cool. Well, that would be like adding a target. So describe to me your mission. Uh, so let's see, we are trying to, I think measure reflectance of the different, of the glaciers in Alaska um, to kind of determine the, the change over time of the glaciers and our, you know, since they're melting and stuff to kind of document that. Okay, great. So are you gonna be tracking all the glaciers or one in particular? There was a group of them that we were gonna, a uh, group of five that we're gonna track. I don't remember the names at the moment. Okay, no need, uh, but that's good to know. So what you would do, he's uh, add here, uh, I believe the best would be an area target. And then uh, you could, Use the wizard. Let's try this real quick. All right, let's do a default one. It's been a while since I haven't used a, an area target, but we're gonna go and select properties and uh, I'm gonna try to, sorry, just, trying to find myself here. So I'm gonna to try to add the coordinates for, for these, but imagine that your glacier is something like this. Hard to see, but I'm gonna... So see, I clicked on the map. Uh, imagine this is a huge glacier, okay? Don't mind the exact details. I'm gonna just remove the first point. And let me try to change the color here so you guys can see better. Let's do a yellow, I like yellow. All right, so you see, I, I just clicked on the map here and it created a triangle, but you could do a polygon or a very detailed map, or you can import the coordinates for your glaciers. And uh, that, you, if you have a file, that's the best, is that you can always reload the same file and you don't have to do this manually. But with this area target now, and probably you would have more area targets. So it could be Glacier 1, Glacier 2. Now you can start to do the same thing. Uh, you can access, uh, compute access to your satellite or from the satellite to the glacier. Maybe that's, let's try that. So we're gonna click on the Artemis satellites and we're gonna click. So facility one already is uh, computed. Now we're gonna compute Air target one. Huh. Not sure what it's. Oh, yes. Why do you or guys think? Get it. Oh. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> Important. That's why you simulate, because your brain might not think of every detail, right? So, what would you do now? So, what's the problem from from the student's perspective? Why, why are these traces here and not over the area target? The orbit is not correct in the position of the orbit. Okay, and let's be more specific. What exactly is not correct on at the orbit for this orbit? It won't pass over the target? Sure, but there's one Keplerian element uh, oh. that is wrong here. Do you know what, what which one it is? I haven't gone over orbital parameters yet. Okay, uh, fine. Then 
uh, I'll pass you on the specific uh, coplarian element description, but your your guys, you, you know, intuitively, you guys know what it is. So I'm going to try to get it out of you. So what what is the problem? Uh, Describe to me the problem in, in the best technical terms that you guys know of. Orbit insertion failed. Uh, orbit insertion actually succeeded because you're orbiting, you're still orbiting, but what's this problem, like what's this point here? Does it reach like a high enough latitude? Correct. Exactly. So you would want to change the orbits so that it could reach higher latitudes. And we call that the inclination of the orbit. So if you remember, uh, when we created the orbit, we, I, I selected 51.6 degrees inclination. And that's your limit. That's your 51.6 degrees right there. So I'm going to select the satellites and go to orbit wizard. And I'm going to change that to, I don't know, 70. Boom. Now you're covering the glaciers. So uh, let me know if we need to stop here. But uh, yeah, happy to answer more questions. So I'm going to pause for a moment for questions. All right. Well, we'll certainly be in touch. Thank you so much for doing this demo. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot. Yeah, even with the free version of SDK, you can do a ton of analysis. So it's great. Um, you guys are a very, very powerful tool. I shall add that uh, we have at HSFL the professional version to train students and to you know engage you guys in, in learning more SDK. So I highly recommend that you try the professional version to to do other things like for instance the solar panel uh, power generation that is available on the professional tool. So if you guys want, I'll do another demo for that. Yeah. Um, we have computers in post 544, the data center that you have access to. So I will ask in the future if one of you and the teams will feel comfortable going to Post 544 to access the pro license. Anyway, thank you so much again for this demo. Um, some of our students have to go, so I wanna be conscientious of that. Thank you for the demo.